<laughs> it was fun. Well, Daddy almost broke my legs, but it's fun. <laughs> So Monday morning, this is the start of a very exciting week for many reasons. Tomorrow, most people here in the United States are gonna be off because it's the 4th of July. Big parties are gonna be happening everywhere, fireworks. But my morning starts really, really early at the airport because we'll be flying off for vacation. But today, we have work. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the shop. There's a lot of parties today, there's a lot of parties tomorrow, there was a lot of parties yesterday. We're just gonna get there and see what happens. And as you can tell, I just wanna get through the day. So, without further ado, let's get going, let's get to work. All right, so the first car of the day is a Hyundai Sonata that we're gonna go ahead and put this Kenwood radio with Sirius XM. Now he currently has Sirius XM in here. The problem is, is it's the face of the radio. See how it's all dark right there? The LCD is burned out, so he wants to upgrade it to a new one, two things. One, the Sirius XM antenna for this car is located here in the trunk. And two, if you're gonna bring your car in for any type of service, any type of service, clean it out, seriously. This is ridiculous, people. Clean out your car. So there's the Sirius XM antenna. It's in the passenger side. We're going to unplug it there. Add the SAT-1 and a 20-foot extension and run it back forward. This was the back seat. This is what still needs to go back in the trunk that we took out just to get to the corner over here. So you guys have asked before, what do we use when we want to retain the factory Sirius XM? For the most part, you just need a SAT-1. Now in the SAT-1, it comes with an adapter that plugs into SVX 300 tuner and then we'll typically plug into most, and I say most, aftermarket Sirius XM. Now, for the length we're gonna need, we get these, I don't even know if this company still exists, the XM Fan Store. I just ordered these off of Amazon. I just put in, you know, 10, 20, 15 foot Sirius XM antenna extension. These come to me. There you go. That's what you're gonna want for a case like this where you need to lengthen it. Anything that's a Sirius XM, it's gonna be ready, meaning it's not built in. This is the tuner you want. You wanna keep the box because on the back down here in the corner is where the tuner serial number is. It's also on channel triple zero as well as channel zero zero one will give you the 1-800 number to call these guys. So if you guys have ever seen us put this particular model in, this is the Kenwood, and you'll see that there's this piece of plastic right here with a circle. What this is, is this is the piece of plastic that covers the switch panel right here. And it's the screen is super sensitive to touches as far as scratch and whatnot. So we actually peel this off and put it over this until we're done so that when we're putting it in, we don't have any problems with the screen. So no week would be complete without at least one of these. That's right, baby. We got a Jeep. <laughs> so you guys know we do a ton of Jeeps. You've seen them on this. You've seen them on the videos we do. So what, what can we talk about today that you guys don't already know? Well, it's a product that we like to put in these, and it's by Rockford. You guys ask us what speakers we like. One of those is Punch. And why we like Punch and Jeeps well, let me show you. So the Punch series actually comes in several different sizes. They don't just make like one six and a half. They make a 16.75 version, which is a six and three quarters, both in components and here in separates. Now the cool thing about these, they're really big as compared to a normal six and a half. So when you take the Chrysler oversized six and a half that they use, the three hole six and a half, with this speaker, you just have to attach it, screw it in. You don't have to add any spacers, brackets, or anything like that. You do make new screw holes, that's not a big deal. The other thing that's nice too is Rockford always puts foam on the back of their speakers. Not only do these things sound good, not only do these fit better, it's less work. Who doesn't like that? Now the factory speaker here is made out of plastic, which sucks. What happens a lot of the times with these Chrysler speakers, especially in the doors of cars when they use these, is that this magnet actually will break off because this thing gets super hot and melts right out of this plastic. All 
All right, so we're gonna take you through the process real quick on how to put the Rockford tweeter in the factory location. First thing you need to do is pop off the side panel here so that you can get access to the bottom of the tweeter. Then you need a panel tool. You're just gonna kind of work your way around the tweeter and it's just eventually, you're just gonna, it's gonna pop out. Go ahead and pull it forward. There's a clip on the back. Here's a little tab. It'll come out. Go ahead and tuck this wire all the way down in there. You're not going to need this. All right, let's go over to the bench. All right, so mounting the tweeter, you have to. This is the back side of the tweeter. This is the front side of the tweeter. The two have to go like this between the plastic. In order to do that, this piece here is a little too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind this down. So to start off with, we're gonna go ahead and put some tape on it, mainly so we have a writing surface in which to draw on. Now go ahead and cut out the middle. All right, set your piece in there, grab a pencil, just kind of draw around the tweeter. So what you end up with, you're done, is a line drawn on there. Now you wanna to grind to that line. Okay, so now you've made the overall shape smaller. Now what you wanna do is hold it like this, and this top half here, you have to grind this even smaller because this is too thick. You, you have plenty of room to still grind it down, but you wanna take this down to about half of what it is now, but just the top and also grind the back down. So we'll do that. All right, as you can see, the top is thinner than the bottom. That's so that the, the, the thing it's going up into, it needs to be able to slide all the way up to the top. At this point, you're pretty much done with this side of things. You can go ahead and remove the orange tape. Now, the kit comes with a couple different screws, basically three different ones. You're gonna want just the longer one here. That's the screw you're gonna use. You need this, you need this, the screw, and you need to cut the hole a little bit bigger than it currently is. So let's go over there and I'll show you that. This part here where these little notches are, you need to bring it out to that size all the way around so that this speaker cup fits in there flush. Okay, so now you actually have to slide this up from behind with the thin spot on the top. Now we have the cup mounted. Let's grab the tweeter and snake it through. There's two little teeth here that this has to line up with. Just kind of work it until you get it and it'll pop in flush. Now this is the front face guy here. What you need to do also is sand the bottom of this so that it snaps on. Otherwise, this is a little bit too pointy and it's gonna rub the bottom and not go in all that well. And then just snap this in place and your tweeter's in. So if you're doing a Jeep that doesn't have the cool factory Bluetooth mic, this is where we like to mount it. It seems to work pretty good right here. It's on the A pillar. What do we have now, Fernando? The backup camera and the Toyota. So this one is gonna be one you guys are gonna like, mainly because this answers a question that you guys ask us all the time. And this person has made a decision on that. Ready? Okay, let's check this out. So in his dash right now, he has a 9903 brand new Kenwood Exelon radio. What he's taking that out to replace it with is this guy right here. Now to be fair, he has another car that has a Pioneer radio in it and he really likes the way the Pioneer radio works in that car. He's not real thrilled with this. To back the train up a little bit, like I've said before, play with the operating system, see if you like the operating system, because they're two totally different operating systems. He has Pioneer, he has Kenwood, he likes the Pioneer operating system. It's nothing against the product. He just likes the way the Pioneer is to use. Now, the 8201 comes with a backup camera. He wants a license plate camera. It comes with a little cube. So how do we make a cube camera a license plate camera? We have an answer for that too. Check this out. So Alpine makes this part right here, the KTX-C10LP. And what it is, is this just that. It's a license plate for their cube camera. It comes with all the mounts. So what we're doing and what we use it for is just this. This is the camera that comes with the Pioneer radio. You take off the factory bracket, you screw on this bracket. It simply goes in like this. There's four screws that attach to the back of it. 
and you're done. You've made this a license plate camera. So a lot of the times when you're installing a rear view camera, like Fernando is here, you guys ask, where do I connect in for reverse? And we say, just connect at the reverse light wire. And the reason why we say that most of the time is, is you're here, you're working in the back of the car. It's real simple to just go over to the reverse light, which is right here and tap into it. Now, the question is, how do I figure out which one it is? You need a tool, either a test light or a voltmeter. So we have a voltmeter, so we'll go ahead and plug in our red and we'll connect our ground to a ground point here in the back. Set the meter to DC, which is the line with the dots below it. And now what we wanna do is have someone put the car in reverse and you see something that looks like this. Now, typically it's gonna be between 13 and let's say 10, 11 volts. This one's kinda low, but that's okay it's what we're getting i don't know how old the battery in his car is but as you can see that's what's working and then in the back you'll see the reverse lights now when you're finding the reverse lights make sure you look because like a lot of the times like in this car the tag is the tag is here but when the tag is here sometimes the reverse lights are here next to it and other times they're there so make sure you you you're looking in the right area there's been times where people are like i can't find the reverse lights and it's like that's because they're up there or down there. So turn them on and look before you start probing. So this is what it looks like with the Alpine mounted on there. All right, so it's got a pretty nice picture. Sweet. Beautiful. All right, this one's done. All right, look at that. Here it is. Last car of the day. Just so happens to be a big ass Ford truck. And this one's funny. So the last car, we took out a Kenwood to put in a Pioneer. This car, we're taking out a Pioneer to put in a Kenwood. Awesome. So there again, say it and I'll say it again. You gotta go and you gotta play with these things because you don't know what you like until you touch it. So stop asking, go touch them. It works in life too, exactly. just saying. All right, let's knock this out. All right, so we have the new Kenwood in the dash, looking all snazzy. Does the backup camera still work? Still working. All right. So that's it for today. This was the last car. Pretty excited about that. That means as soon as I get home, my vacation is starting. So if you don't want to know anything about that, go ahead and stop today. That's the end of this. Otherwise, stay tuned for clips from the vacation. I can't wait. Hopefully you can either. Say bye. See ya. See ya. All right, so we made it to the airport. Dad dropped us off. We're eating some dinner, having some Chick-fil-A. We're staying here at the hotel because our flight tomorrow leaves at 6 a.m. So it's real early. You know, we get into the airport, traffic and all that. Don't want to deal with it. we be waking up at 3 a.m. Yeah, so it's much easier just to stay the night here at the hotel. So we're gonna eat this, probably walk around the hotel, see what's going on. See how it goes. So other than a family vacation, one of the purposes of this trip is because she just graduated. She turned 18. So this is kind of like everything all in one. Last big hurrah. Probably not the last one, but a big one for sure. That's why we're here and why we're doing this. Now, when we talk about Florida being a flat state, I want you guys to see this. Ch check this out. There's not a bump out there, but there's a beautiful sunset. Okay, so we are now on our way to drop off our bags. I got a whopping two and a half hours of sleep. Pretty tired, but feeling good. All right, to all my Dallas, Texas guys, we're here, we're making an hour stop. Thanks for your support, guys, as always. On to Hawaii. Dude, I didn't know you guys had a fun ride at the airport. Holy crap. <laughs> on a lighter note, if you're going to do traveling, noise canceling headphones are the these are Sennheisers. All right guys, we just landed. The landing was shake and bake for sure. Um, yeah, let's go sightseeing. She slept most of the trip home, or most of the trip here, I should say home, whatever. All right, we gotta go pick up some luggage. Stay one of vacation. I'm out by myself doing a little photography work, love of mine, but I, I gotta show you guys what I'm taking pictures of. This, this is insane.
Thanks for the new hat, John. Rocking it on this vacation. Look at that. I mean, seriously? Camera guys, you know, camera fans. So here it is, killing it. If you're trying to take a shot like this during the day, you need a polarizer so you get these nice dark skies. So here you go, here's the camera. All right, I'm gonna get back to this. I, I, gotta, I gotta get more pictures. This is too beautiful. When you're taking pictures, you have to always be looking around and see what shots you're missing. Check this out behind me. Look, look at that. It's a face and the rocks. You've got the eyes and nose and some funky teeth. So what you're looking at is me hanging off the side of a cliff to get this cool little pool of water. And pucker factor is about a four, maybe a six. All right, so we started out somewhere over here. We managed to go all the way around and up and over. And now we're on what looks like a lunar landscape. This, this is insane. Actually, we were looking, when we were over here, we were looking at where I'm at right now. And it was really it's pretty neat. Oh, can't see anything. There we go. Stinger hat. Um, but yeah, this is just, it's a workout, but it's gorgeous. I don't think I'll have to run tonight, that's for sure. Alright, so I brought the girls no. back. <laughs> We're out on the rock cliff the ones earlier today. What are we doing today, Haley? We're going zip lining through the mountain. There she is, all set and ready to go. GoPro. Might not make it. Not nice. <laughs> Alright, see ya. <laughs> It's Friday, we're out driving around. We're at the lava flow right now. All right, so we followed the lava flow all the way down to where it meets the beautiful water. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Another island, they're just everywhere. Another one over here, islands everywhere. It's fun, beautiful day. All right, so Haley and I are here at Blue Hawaiian Helicopter Tours. We're getting ready to go out on a hour and a half extravaganza of whirly bird activity. It's just the two of us because everyone else other than us has already done a helicopter ride. So this is gonna be our first. You excited? That's a, I'm scared to death. Uh, let's get this over with. <laughs> helicopter tour and then we had to immediately leave to get to a picnic and it's windy as hell here and the reason why is because this is where they film and do all that cool well here check it out these guys yeah so the wind here is insane but we also have this guy over here on the beach that's a big seal They're pretty cool All right guys, so it's in the morning, we're here, and we're going to a swap meet. We're gonna get our shopping on. We're gonna pop some tags, maybe, probably not. That's all I can think of though. So we're at Sumo Dog Maui's, getting us 
a hot dog. This is some passion fruit, spicy garlic, mustard. I don't know. Let's give it a... Nah, you want a bite? No. Nope. Okay, it's going to be weird. Is it good? It's hot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. You should check them out if you're at the swap meet. Pick them up. Done? Yeah. This is what we got. So it's kind of lunchtime. They don't have these where we're from, so we stopped in. Yeah, that's right. Jack in the box. All right, so. I have to say, it's much better than In N Out. All right, so all you In N Out guys, I'm sorry. She liked this better. This last was year. Great. Last year we did the In N Out. This year we're doing the Jack in the Box. I didn't have a burger, so. So we're at the Maui Ocean Center. Gonna check out some fishies. Gonna be fun. So is boxed water better? No, it tastes like cardboard. All right, so if you hear the waves in the background, that's because today we're doing a water activity. We're going snorkeling from a big ass catamaran. Every time we go out on a boat, one of the things is Sue is always like, there's never any dolphins, there's never any dolphins. So being able to see dolphins right from the get-go, hopefully this is a good, good sign. Well, it's time to get back on the boat. That was a lot of fun. So we're at 7,000 feet on... Mount Haleakala. We're cruising up to the top, which is up here. That'll be 10,000 feet. We're almost there. We're just stopping at the rest stop to hit the bathrooms, which are these guys right here. They have a lot of porta potties in this place. Quality, quality for sure. And we made it to the top. It's yeah. 55 degrees and windy. It's not windy. There's not a breeze in sight. It's windy over there. This is the observation center over here for yes, the, the government right and college. Yeah, yeah, that guy. That right there. Yeah. Well, let's go around and we'll show you what the rest of this looks like. Yeah. Space stuff. <laughs> Were you cold? I was cold. I went and got my jacket. So we're down from the mountain and we're over in Lahaina and we're doing some shopping. There you go, spending money. So far, I think we've gotten toffee and ice cream. And a Christmas ornament. Oh, and a Christmas ornament. So, our favorite things. Good. Finally got my stuff. Awesome.
awesome. So today the girls wanted to try paddle boarding and canoeing. So this is the situation we're in right now. This is going to be amusing. Alright kiddo, did you have a good time? Yes, it was very amusing. <laughs> So today's journey takes us through, past, and around a place called Hana. 52 bridges of excitement and nauseam. Nauseam? Yeah, it yeah, makes you nauseous. Is that a word? It's probably not a word, but it, it best describes... <laughs> Is it nausea? Mom, yeah, whatever. We're at the black sand beach and like everything on this trip, it's a windy staircase to get down. Downhill. All the way up to there. It's always scary climbing up these things, but the view is worth it. Am I right? You're right. And then, there's that idiot. So it's the last day of the vacation. This has been a pretty it's been an intense, exhausting. intense and exhausting and fun. Lots of fun, a lot of fun went into it. One of the last things we wanted to try is they have this drink here called Pog. And we, we've seen it a couple times and we just kind of browsed past it. But I was like, you gotta try it, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. So we got it, we're gonna try it. So. Ugh. It kind of reminds me of Sunny D. And apple juice. See, I think it tastes—it has like a grapefruit taste, but that must be the passion fruit. I like it. I think it tastes guava. tastes really good. Guava could be. It tastes really good. It's oh, very it's sweet, so which gross. is probably why I like it. Let's see what she's you... weird. She doesn't. It's got to be bitter. Twenty-five or grams of sugar. Probably another reason why I like oh it. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, so we've tried that. Now we have one last journey. And that's to the airport, but we're gonna have some lunch first, right across the street here. And that's about it. So we'll see you guys at the airport. Bye. All right, we're going home. We are on the plane in Hawaii still, about to leave. They are about to tell us their whole spiel, so we'll be home not soon enough. It's 12.44, back in Florida. Never been so happy to be home in this hot weather of 90 degrees. I'm very happy to be home. Okay. Woo! We're here. We made it. We didn't die. Thanks for watching as always, guys. You guys have a day. Great. Yeah, it's been a long flight. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.